Hello all of you beautiful people, Jules here for WhatCulture.com and I know you my friend, you probably love a good bit of survival horror video games and you probably think that you've seen it all and played them all. But here's the thing, there are tons of horror games that slip through the radar every single year. So let's take a look at them today as I'm Jules, this is WhatCulture.com and these are 10 exceptional horror video games that deserve a comeback. Number 10, Blue Stinger. Blue Stinger is a survival horror game that doesn't play by any of your so-called rules. It's a rude, crude dude with an attitude and dropped on the Dreamcast way back way in 1999. The standout feature of Blue Stinger was that instead of forcing players to run from enemies at every given opportunity, here you were punching them in the goddamn face. Take that evil, get back in my nightmares where you belong. It was kind of like if Nightmare Creatures went on a tropical holiday, featuring a blistering colour palette, cheesy dialogue and mm -mm, Mm, exceptionally terrible character designs. Arguably, there are actually two versions of this game in existence, the Japanese original and the North American port, the latter of which removed the fixed camera angles that Resident Evil had popularised and gave things a behind-the-character viewpoint. Now, for many, this completely changed the tone of the game, from a classic survival horror into something more resembling an action game. Now, to be honest, the change is not something that I actually like the idea of, as running headlong into an enemy off-screen is always a nice little jump scare, but considering the game's approach to combat, it arguably plays better in this port. Either way, for how unique it was to be able to batter mutated creatures, the ability to swap characters at any given point, and for its over-the-top tone, this is a title that could make waves given the right care and attention. Number 9. Galarians Galarians is such a twisted game that it still genuinely freaks me out when I think about it. From its grimy visuals to its horrendous narrative about human experimentation, the experience is one of pure, unrelenting pressure and tension. However, there is one teeny tiny upside to all of this grimdark, that being that you can use psychic powers to obliterate your foes. That's right, in another inversion of survival horror's removal of the power of the protagonist to create a foreboding atmosphere, here you're a walking nuclear reactor of power and fury. There's only one issue though, and that is in order to control this raging set of otherworldly abilities, you need to use medications to stop yourself from burning out. Galarians is definitely looking a bit ropey in this day and age, but the gameplay is still incredibly solid, and with a new coat of paint, those horrifying bosses and mutations that you experience could offer the world a new set of sleepless nights. It's Resident Evil meets Akira, and there is nothing about that sentence I don't like. Number 8. Harvester Harvester is... Uh, it is... <laughs> Jeez, how does one even begin to describe the oddity that is Harvester? On paper, it sounds pretty simple. A 2D survival horror puzzle game which looks like it was animated using the leftovers of the original Mortal Kombat titles. However, in practice, this game is so, so much more. And much of that more is utterly bizarre, utilising the concept of the uncanny to an acute extent. Presenting a town set in the 1950s that is filled with creepy, slightly off characters and events that are so bizarre that they almost warrant their own list. From being able to try and seduce your own mother, to being shot by a child if you choose to steal his candy, to how utterly insane it is to get a game over involving a man with amputated legs accidentally landing on a button that launches nuclear weapons which end up annihilating all of human life. Yes, that is a thing you can do! It is a strange game, yet it's so utterly unique that it's a franchise that needs a revisit. Imagine if a studio like Devolver got their hands on this and plied their knowing humour to this concept of a world where nothing is quite as it should be. That would be brilliant. Number 7. Cold Fear now, there are an alarming amount of PS2 horror titles that never got the sequel rub, these one-and-done affairs that just came and went like the passing of the tides. However, one that was unfairly jettisoned overboard to drown in the seas of obscurity was indeed Cold Fear, a shockingly well-made horror title that never really made quite the right splash. Set aboard a monstrous tanker, the player is tasked with uncovering why all has gone quiet below decks. Before you know it, you're rushing through leaky corridors from unholy monstrosities, unsure if the next clock claustrophobic turn will lead you to freedom or certain doom. It was a concept so good that Resident Evil Revelations almost just straight up copied the idea, but for some reason left out one of Cold Fear's best inclusions. At certain points in the game, the boat would be rocked by heavy waves, causing you to slip and slide across rooms and completely mess up your aim on enemies. This constant threat of nature itself landing you in hot water made every moment drip with tension. This game needs a comeback, so please throw Cold Fear a life preserver, or at least make some 
some room on your door that you're floating on for it. Come on, there's clearly enough space. Number six, the suffering. Never have I felt more empowered and at the same time more vulnerable than when playing the action horror title that is The Suffering and its sequel, Ties That Bind. This is a glorious expression of body horror and an absolute gore fest once the action kicks in, which is incredibly frequent. In the original title, you play as a man called Tork, whose death row due date is interrupted by literal hell opening up on the prison island that he's on. As you battle your way to freedom, you learn of all the atrocities that took place on Carnate Island, and each of the enemies that you face comes to represent a cruel method of punishment or execution that was used here. It's a game that dripped with hatred and used this anger to fuel both your desperate attempt to escape, but also as a constant reminder of the brutality that lies within each of us. The sequel doubled down on all of this, upping the action and horror in equal measure, adding in yet more disgusting creatures that just beg to be dissected online in forums. And it's this enemy detail especially that's missing from a lot of modern horror titles. With Silent Hill constantly flatlining, there is a clear gap in the market for some out there designs, and the suffering was chock full of them. Number 5. Dino Crisis Oh, Capcom, you really are leaving money on the table with this one, aren't you? It's been long enough now that we've all forgiven you for clearly doing so many lines in the bathroom that the idea of taking Dino Crisis to space seemed like a good one. And you know what? We just want to see this series back on terra firma, please. It's Resident Evil with dinosaurs. I can't imagine a single person who isn't at least tempted to see what a game with this description would be like. Yet after the critical lambasting that Dino Crisis 3 received, at least when compared to the first two games, it seems like the franchise has been fossilized for good. Rumors began swirling that a remake was on the cards from Capcom, but those died down when it was revealed that the almighty Resident Evil 3 was going to receive that prestigious treatment. However, with the release of that title, it actually set a bit of a precedent. The team has an amazing new graphical engine, and was able to convert the third Resi game over in short order, so would it be such a stretch to apply this to the original Dino Crisis? I say no, and also give me this game. Number 4. I Am Alive I Am Alive is probably one of the most ironic video game titles out there, as after playing through this utterly dour experience, you might well be left wishing you weren't, as this brutal survival title is utterly, truly bleak. Imagine if The Road was made into a video game and you'd be on the right lines with this one. Not that I'm chastising the title for having such negative tones, far from it in fact, as the oppressive atmosphere ended up creating a level of immersion that most other games only dream of achieving. Here you see the jagged fractures of what is left of humanity after an apocalyptic event, and you're tasked with just one single goal, survive. This will push you to do unspeakable things, as well as witness the death of hope in your fellow man. Yet, as a standalone title, I Am Alive came and went without much buzz, meaning that it's actually perfect for a comeback. Days Gone and The Last of Us have shown how successful the humanity on the brink setting can be, and with a more focused approach, I Am Alive could scratch a much needed itch. Number 3. Obscure now there's the obvious joke that Obscure really has itself faded into obscurity. However, when looking at the gameplay on offer and the brilliant concept of switching party members on the fly to utilize their own strengths, this school-based horror title really should have been on everyone's radar. Using a similar tactic as Alan Wake in that light sources break down enemies in order for you to deliver the killing blow, Obscure's lighting direction is impeccable, creating a sense of dread when you move to poorly lit areas and realize that you'll have to rely on what meager supplies you have with you. You can even play Obscure with a friend, making the experience infinitely more fun as now both of you race around the school, avoiding monsters and solving puzzles. It's a dynamic that worked so much better than the tosh AI that you were lumbered with in Resi 5 and adds in a ton of replayability. The setting, atmosphere, campy dialogue and ability to play with a friend would all translate perfectly to a modern audience. Fingers crossed it gets the passing grade in the near future. Number 2. Resident Evil Outbreak Whoa, 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 a Resident Evil game on a comeback list? Surely this must be some kind of mistake. Everybody knows about Capcom's biggest tentpole franchise, right? Well, my friend, you are totally right. But it also appears that Capcom themselves have forgotten just how unique an idea Resident Evil Outbreak was, seeing as how they seem to have abandoned the concept entirely. This is a true shame because Outbreak 1 and 2 were doing something really special, pushing online co-op survival missions set within the iconic Raccoon City. At the time, online play for the PlayStation 
PlayStation 2 was in its infancy, and poor sales due to fans being put off by adverts suggesting that it was only online meant that Capcom soon gave up on this spin-off. Mechanically, it's what you'd expect from the IP, which is not a criticism at all. Tense moments, interesting and grotesque enemies, and characters with different loadouts and stats, meaning that teamwork really was essential. Given the huge boon of online gaming since then, and the rabid demand for online horror content, remaking or at least returning to this concept would be a dream come true for most Resi fans. And number one, Mizerna Fools. Imagine an open-world, free-roam survival horror title set in an isolated town seemingly locked in a permanent winter, and then sprinkle on top of that a liberal dose of Twin Peaks oddness. This is Mizuna Fools, a video game that managed to cram all of this onto a PS1 disc, and which is an utterly brilliant experience from start to finish. Now don't kick yourself for not knowing of this game, as it never actually got a localization outside of Japan, and it's only through the tireless work of fans and translators that English versions of this game exist. Yet this is precisely why this video game needs either a remaster or a full remake, because it's an experience worth seeking out. As protagonist Matthew, you need to explore this creepy and unfriendly town regarding the disappearance of your friends. As you delve further and further into the mystery, the dark secrets of the locals begin to surface, and soon the title bleeds with a tense and uncomfortable atmosphere that breeds paranoia in every interaction you have. Making things even more oppressive is a seven-day time limit, in which you need to complete your investigation, and because each local has their own routines and the game includes a day-night cycle, you need to plan your actions in advance, making even a simple drive down a country road a frantic race against the clock. It's a technical marvel considering the platform it released on, and is assuredly one of the most deserving games when it comes to a refresh for the modern-day horror community. And there we go, my friends. Those were 10 exceptional horror video games that deserve a comeback. I hope that you enjoyed that, and please let me know what you thought about it down in the comments section below. As always, I've been Jules. You can go follow me over on Twitter at RetroJ with a zero. 